Well, around about $90 trillion is going to be required over the next 15 years um, in terms of um, infrastructure finance um, to meet the demands of, of um, the world economy. Um, and um, over three quarters of that will be required in, in um, the world's growing urban areas. Um, and that $90 trillion can either be brown or green. Brown, continued investment in, um, um, in, in, in inefficient, dirty, um, um, old um, urban infrastructure, or we can move to a more sustainable infrastructure. Green, more livable, um, better in terms of livability and the environment, um, improvements in terms of um, air quality, etc. Um, local um, finance, particularly involving municipal authorities in cities all around the world, will be absolutely critical to delivering on that um, goal. One of the areas which is going to be absolutely fundamental for um, ensuring that we can scale up um, sustainable infrastructure um, to meet global growth, poverty reduction and climate goals, um, you know, the role of municipal authorities is going to be absolutely fundamental to this. Um, and one of the key areas which is really important is to focus on is to enhance the domestic revenue base of cities, municipal authorities, local authorities to enable them to invest in that infrastructure. Now one of the key ways that that can be done is to work with local governments and municipal authorities to enhance um, their credit worthiness. Um, one example of this is um, the Kampala City Authority recently worked with PIAF, a major international um, financing facility to help improve their ability to raise domestic revenue and to improve the transparency and governance related to, to, to financial revenues. The local authority was able to boost its revenue by 83% in one year, and that enabled them to double their ability to borrow in capital markets and therefore invest in sustainable urban infrastructure, which is going to be critical for the competitiveness of Kampala to meeting um, the needs of the urban poor and to reducing some of the large-scale environmental impacts in terms of traffic congestion and the related um, impacts on, on air quality, etc. The key question really is how do you equip local government and related community groups um, and the private sector with the resources um, to invest in the right type of um, sustainable infrastructure? Now, there's a number of mechanisms which are really important. Land-based financing is absolutely a mechanism which is underexplored and underdeveloped, particularly in the fast-growing developing world. So, for example, um, the use of um, the use of land value capture to help um, leverage the value of land for investment in sustainable urban infrastructure is one underexploited area. This has been very successfully used in many parts of the world and could be scaled up and, and, and enhanced. Um, another area which is really, really critical is to really think about very carefully about how you, you charge for certain types of urban infrastructure. So for example, it is possible to really think quite carefully about rolling out the use of congestion charges and put a price on, um, on road use um, that has been successfully used in cities all around the world, including some surprising examples in the developing world, um, very successfully used to actually enhance the domestic revenue base of a municipal authority, actually reduce the externalities related to traffic congestion um, and air pollution, at the same time as providing resources for investing in public transport, for example, to complement investment in road infrastructure. Um, and a third example is to really think creatively about um, investment platforms, platforms that are developed by local authority in partnership with national government and international financing institutions to help aggregate a whole range of different projects 
that might be developed by community groups or developed by local authorities and enable you to leverage large-scale national and, and private capital into those.